Hi there. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, I guess I'm the last talk before uh, you and lunch. We've had a fantastic series of uh, presentations. So um, my talk is uh, called uh, Collaborating on the Future of Computing, Sustainable Silicon to uh, Intelligent Clouds. And what I thought I would do today is to break my talk into two parts. So the first part, I'm going to uh, look back a little bit and uh, think about where we have come as a community in hyperscale computing and what it means for this new era of AI uh, ahead of us. And then in the second part, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, how we as a community have been collaborating. I'm going to talk about the progress on some of our work together. And I'm going to also talk about some uh, call to action. OK, so with that, let's jump right in. Uh, so Google was founded in 1998. And uh, we completed 25 years last year. And, and given that a lot of what we consider hyperscale computing came from uh, some of the innovations at Google, I thought we could take a look back at Google's 25-year history of um, hyperscale computing and, and see what are the common themes that come across. And, and I'm going to do that in five-year epochs. And, and so the first five-year epoch was really about uh, introducing scale-out computing. And, and very early on, uh, Google realized that for a workload like web search, you really need huge amounts of computing and storage. And, and so this era was characterized by a lot of scrappy computing. So uh, how many people here have seen the Google Smithsonian Corkboard servers? OK, a few people there. OK, and, and then you can see there was more creative uh, cooling, as you can see in this picture as well. But one of the key themes in this particular era was something that we have continued to see in hyperscale computing all along, which is this notion of workload specialization and uh, hardware software co-design. The next five years, we saw a whole host of uh, fundamental system innovations building what we think of as uh, hyperscale computing today. So we had custom servers, custom storage, custom data centers. We went beyond web search to starting to think about uh, Android, YouTube, Gmail, so the beginnings of cloud computing. Uh, we also started innovating in a lot of system stack, MapReduce, Bigtable, Colossus, uh, Borg, and again, this notion that you have system infrastructure collaborating with hardware as well. And, uh, and, and so we also started thinking about efficiency as a first-class citizen. The next five years was really about scaling, networking, security, uh, power. Uh, we introduced terms like PUE, uh, energy proportionality, uh, new networking architectures, uh, uh, security against um, uh, uh, severe threats. But uh, 2011 was also the year that open compute was formed. And in some respects, it marked the transition of hyperscale computing from a niche market to something that was a little bit more mainstream. And then the last decade or so has been really characterized by us kind of thinking about uh, uh, what, is the, uh, what do we do in the um, uh, context of slowing of Moore's law. And um, uh, this, decade, this five year epoch was the first time when uh, the machine learning cycles at Google outnumbered the uh, traditional non-ML cycles. And so we had to respond by having uh, custom silicon accelerators, uh, uh, software defined hardware, and a whole bunch of stuff. And now where we are today is uh, hyperscale computing has truly come into its own, where we are now the societal infrastructure handling cloud workloads, AI workloads, uh, um, thinking about uh, optimizing across performance, efficiency, sustainability, reliability, and so on. So now while there's a whole bunch of innovations, and we have a really nice paper that you can go look at our web page on, uh, one of the common themes that is fundamental in my mind to hyperscale computing is this notion of holistic design. So we've always been thinking about cross-stack, cross-disciplinary innovation at scale. And, and so this is the same theme that we are going to also start seeing in the uh, next era, which is really, uh, um, uh, I guess we haven't talked about AI at all so far, have we? So uh, the uh, infrastructure uh, supercharge for AI. So how many people here in the audience work on something relating to AI? OK, everyone, good. Uh, so uh, and, and so uh, again, the key theme of hyperscale computing here, which is this notion of holistic design, really applies in this era of uh, AI as well. And so we start thinking about silicon chips. And then we go beyond chips to starting to think about systems. How do we think about distributed ensembles and so on? And it's not just systems. We start going beyond systems to platforms, hardware, software, code design. And it's not just platforms. We also start thinking in terms of uh, ecosystems as well. So to put that in context, let's take our journey on uh, TPU. Uh, most of you have heard of uh, the tensor processing unit, which is Google's custom silicon accelerator. We've had multiple generations of that. We recently announced the Trillium uh, TPU as well. And, and so if you look at um, what we started off with, we did a whole bunch of innovations in terms of uh, having custom silicon for new data formats. 
uh, accelerators for matrix multiplication embeddings, the new memory hierarchies like HBM and so on. But then really the magic happened when we took these chips and built larger systems out of that. And, and a bunch of really foundational innovations, one around liquid cooling. Uh, Google announced that we have more than a gigawatt of liquid cooling deployed in our data centers. Uh, uh, this was like a few months back. And, uh, and then uh, uh, power, how do we kind of get the green sustainable power to uh, power all this uh, amazing needs for AI? And also networking, how do we use uh, optical technology in very innovative ways to have customized topology optimized for individual workloads and so on. And then all of these systems then becomes what you see on the picture on the left, the bottommost layer, which is this notion of performance optimized hardware. And then you layer additional software layers on top of that. So JAX, PyTorch, uh, um, Kubernetes, scheduling engines, and so on. And together, that block is something that we call the AI hypercomputer. And that, in turn, becomes the lowermost block in the picture on the right where you can now take the AI hypercomputer and then build models on top of that, model gardens, all the way to applications. And so that is really the power of co-design, looking at everything from chips to systems to platforms to uh, ecosystems. And as I said, it's really served us well. We have gotten orders of magnitude uh, improvements in cost efficiency, power efficiency, sustainability by taking this across generations. Now, there is one other kind of co-design as well, which is what the 7,000 of us are here today, which is collaboration across industry on standards and ecosystems. And, and so, obviously, the uh, uh, collaborations that Google has with OCP is a great example of that. And we started at OCP almost a decade back, and we have since been uh, continuing to increase our collaborations. But what I thought I would do is to take the last half of this talk and focus on, on, on a few vignettes and, and I'm going to use the title of my talk and focus on those four words. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of those. So let's start with sustainability. So one of the things I'm really excited about is our progress on green concrete. Last year, when I gave this keynote, uh, Google, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, all the hyperscalers, we got together and we published a very ambitious roadmap for how we can decarbonize concrete in our data centers. And that was important because not only do we want to reduce carbon footprint of data centers, we also want to reduce the carbon footprint of our entire construction industry as well. And I'm super pleased at the progress so far. We as a community have gotten together, we have defined new metrics, we have defined uh, new carbon efficient data center designs, we have even used AI to uh, optimize for uh, new uh, materials. And, um, and this video that you see here was actually an event in uh, Illinois where a bunch of us got together, all the hyperscalers, open compute uh, representatives from the White House, and we demonstrated proof of concept uh, prototypes of concrete that can reduce emissions by about 40%, which is super cool. Now, sustainability also has a lot more that we need to do. Uh, all of us have pretty audacious goals. Google, for example, wants to be net zero in carbon by 2030. And so there's a lot more that we should be doing around sustainability as well. Uh, in particular, some of the things you will see at the summit uh, in various presentations, the notion of PCRs, product uh, category rules, where we can holistically understand life cycle impact on sustainability for various systems. Also, the sustainability work stream is looking at water, power, carbon, uh, clean backup. So a whole bunch of opportunities for all of us in the next few days to continue this conversation. The next part I want to talk about is around silicon. And uh, here, I, I think most of us are aware that trusted silicon is the foundation on top of which we build custom uh, uh, hyperscalers and everything else on top of that. And, and so I'm really pleased that uh, we've had a three-year journey on Calyptra, and you heard about Calyptra in the previous talk as well. Calyptra is this reusable IP block for root of trust. And, and I'm really happy that we now have Calyptra 1.0 that is available for integration in um, CPUs, GPUs, all kinds of devices. And Calyptra 2.0 is going to be leveraged for post-quantum uh, post crypto. It's also going to be leveraged for uh, OCP lock. Uh, and lock stands for layered open source cryptographic key management for devices like NVMe and so on. And uh, not just Calyptra, we also have a whole bunch of uh, uh, other optimizations around uh, security as well. And, uh, but first, before that, one of the big announcements that we have, and we published a blog post about that around Calyptra, is that we will be integrating Calyptra, we as in Google, will be integrating Calyptra in all our TPUs and uh, uh, Axion ARM servers as well. So that's super exciting, and we're seeing a lot more momentum there. Uh, in terms of additional uh, silicon stuff, one of the important elements of trusted silicon is also reliability. 
And in past presentations, we have talked about silent data corruption. And again, in the summit, you will see some fantastic progress there in terms of industry academia collaborations. We have also published our uh, Resilience 1.0 spec where we are talking about more open sharing of data, open frameworks, and so on. So lots more to be seen there as well. So then I want to spend a little bit of time on uh, AI accelerators. And again, this was an area when we came last year, we had a call to the community to say, hey, let's all get together and work on standardizing AI systems. And, uh, and we have really delivered. Everything from standardized accelerator systems and uh, working together as an industry to come around uh, uh, firmware updates, management interfaces, reliability, serviceability, to also starting to think about software ecosystems, XLA compiler, JAX, and so on, but also thinking about uh, OCP data formats, which I think is super exciting. And also a lot of advances where we have gotten together and looked at both scale out and scale up networking. And over the other keynotes, you've heard about uh, ultra ethernet where we uh, contributed condition control, we have Falcon, you have UA link, a uh, uh, whole bunch of stuff. Here, the spotlight that I wanna do is to focus on a couple of things. I talked about liquid cooling and how uh, Google has had a lot of expertise and experience in liquid cooling. And so we are really looking forward to working with all of you in the next few days to start thinking about how can we have liquid cooling, high quality liquid cooling in the mainstream. And then in power, Google was the first to introduce, uh, contribute 48 volt uh, uh, to OCP several years back. And at the summit, we are super excited to initiate a discussion around 400 volt DC. And, and especially when you look at the density and the requirements of uh, AI systems, 400 volt DC can have some super exciting uh, implications, not just on efficiency, but also on, uh, on how much density in the payload that you can have as well. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing where these discussions go. And then finally, I want to talk about infrastructure. And infrastructure obviously is the bread and butter of uh, open compute, so you can see that the list is really long. Um, and so everything from uh, standard uh, SSD networking, server stuff, uh, uh, to uh, this uh, video is really cool. This is uh, uh, our open sourcing of uh, random shock and vibration testing, which I think is super important. But we've also contributed in other leadership activities as well, whether it is the uh, uh, OCP advisory board that we helped in uh, uh, creating and kickstarting, or looking at various streams around uh, AI and sustainability. And so here, the spotlight I want to kind of really look at uh, is the uh, uh, innovations we are announcing around robotics in the data center. And uh, uh, Google is talk talking about it. Uh, other uh, partners are also talking about it. And, and you can see the video, uh, whether it is uh, anything from uh, material movement, rack movement, to uh, uh, monitoring, to repair and servicing, to media management. Robotics can be very profoundly transformative in how you think about data center operations, scaling much, much more, while also having safety and reliability as well. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to starting this conversation and, uh, and, and seeing where we go there as well. And then finally, our biggest contribution. Uh, I, uh, so we do have a Google lounge, and I'm told we have a barista with some fantastic coffee. So please uh, come over there. Uh, if you scan the uh, scan code, uh, you will see a bunch of uh, uh, subject matter experts uh, having various sessions and presentations. So we look forward to seeing uh, all of you and, um, and, and continuing this conversation as well. So very quickly, uh, uh, closing. Uh, the uh, talk here and also closing the series of keynotes that you've seen so far, we as a community have a lot of stuff to be proud of. 25 years of hyperscale computing, tons of innovation. We have set the stage for this next big era of AI that we are all embarking on. So to put this moment in context, it's worth thinking about prior revolutions, whether it is the industrial revolution that transformed manufacturing or the um, uh, information revolution with the mobile internet and so on. We are now obviously in an intelligence revolution. And much like other revolutions, this is going to be fundamentally transformative to society as well. And the only way we're going to be able to pull this revolution off is all of us getting together to work on the community, the, the computing that powers AI. And, and really, this computing is going to be driven by co-design, co-design across systems, co-design across uh, hardware and software, but also collaborative co-design across us as a community looking at uh, the right industry ecosystems as well. So with that, uh, thank you for your time. Please enjoy the rest of the summit.